Hi everyone, how are you? Let me go over to the chat room here. Hope you guys can see me. I don't see anybody on here. Oh no. I hope you guys can see me. Oh, here it is, comments, got it. Hey everybody, how are you? I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing Crafts and happy hour, um, embroidery happy hour. Sorry, okay, I no, I am drinking water. Okay, I always drink my water and stuff. Um, today, um, one of the things that I wanna to talk to you guys about this week is about fabrics and stabilizers. Um, you know, I just got back from Miami, Florida. I had a really, really good time. I got to really spend some good quality time with my mom and my aunt. I had not seen my aunt in over 20 years. It was that long since I last saw her. Um, over 20 years, actually. She lives in New York and I, and I live in Virginia. And unfortunately, I don't get to go to New York really at all. Um, but I had, I think the last time I saw my mom was about, I think like two years ago or three years ago. And um, I was supposed to go visit her again, but the pandemic hit and both my parents, they're, you know, they're up there and, you know, they were at the high risk. So unfortunately I was not able to like see them. So we just did a lot of FaceTime. So this was the first time that um, I was able to see my mom and it just happened to have been great timing because my aunt was visiting her there too. So um, I was able to shoot some videos. I don't know if everyone have gotten to see those videos. Um, they were kind of like, in my opinion, a little bit, I mean, the projects came out okay. They didn't come out like fantastic, but um, it was pretty neat because my mom had a very old, old uh, sewing machine. And originally I thought her sewing machine was a singer because every time I asked her, that's what she said it was. But then when I got to Florida and I went to her house, um, you know, it, I saw it was an England uh, sewing machine, which was a brand that I have never heard of. And I don't even think they make those machines today at all. I don't even think so. So I know she bought that machine in 1968. Um, that was the year that I was born. So this year it makes, um, it's going to be 53 years that she's had that machine. It still runs great. Um, one of the things that I noticed that was that machine was actually a sewing slash embroidery machine, but the embroidery was kind of different. It had like little symbols. It does it doesn't do the embroidery like the one that we do with our um, sewing machines. So that was really really neat, and it was a big treat to play with that machine, and also just to videotape with my mom. So you know, I mean. I strongly suggest that, you know, while you're sewing and if you have um, your mom or, or someone around, I would suggest, you know, having fun with them. And I mean, it, I thought it really brought us together. Um, we shared a lot of good laughs. Um, you know, my mom and my aunt critiqued me very, <laughs> they really made fun of me. I tell you that, <laughs> you know, um, and no matter how good I sewed, the older generation was going to get the prize. Okay, so um, it was a lot of a lot of fun, um, you know, and it was really great memories. And I am really hoping to be able to go travel there some more while, you know, I go to, um, you know, and, and visit my mom and stuff. And also while I was out at Miami, I was able to meet one of you guys. Um, I was able to meet up with Norma. Norma also lives in. Um, in Miami, and um, I went to uh, New York Fabrics, and there's a, a shop there that says New York, it's called New York Fabrics, and um, I walked in, and I'm going to tell you something, though. Um, the fabrics were really, really nice, but I'm going to tell you guys something that's kind of, like, funny, because my mom laughed when I told her, you know. Um, I just, I found some fabrics that I really liked, and um, I told the lady I want a yard of it. And then she was like, okay, no problem. She says, let's go to the back and I'll cut the fabric, right? So I'm like, okay. So she took the fabric and she just, and this is the first time I've seen this. And apparently this is something that depending on the type of fabric that you buy, it's okay to do. But I've always shopped my fabrics at, um, I've gone to Walmart, I've gone to Joann's. So, you know, I, always seen people take the fabric, they unfold it, they put it on a table, and then they take the scissors and they gently cut 
your yard, right? Well, let me tell you, this lady took a pair of scissors and she just cut, you know, she just, I'll show you. This is like a yard of fabric, right? And let's say you're like, okay, I want a yard. So she's like, okay, so, you know, they take the fabric, they measure it, right? So then like, let's say this is the end of the yard. She took the, the scissors and then she cut it. Then she put down the scissor and she took both sides and she just ripped it. And when she ripped it, I mean, my face, I was like, I was like, that's fabric abuse. I was like, oh my God. I was, I was like, are you sure I got a yard? You know? And the lady was like, yeah, you got a yard. And I'm like, you didn't use the scissor. She's like, I don't have to use the scissor because the way the fibers are, I guess apparently, and, and I'm gonna tell you something, I went home, I measured it because I was like, did she just jit me, you know? So I went home and I, me <laughs> I measured it. And then she's right, she's right. I mean, she cut that, that thing was a straight line. And I was just like in shock, but I'm gonna tell you something, she freaked me out. I mean, she freaked me out because I told her, I never saw somebody cut fabric like that. Never, never did. And, and I was just like, they don't do that in Joanne's. And she goes, well, I don't know. In Joanne's, you know, I, that, that's how we do it. You know, <laughs> I was like, I, you know, because I was thinking to myself, is this a Puerto Rican way to cut fabric? I mean, she just took the scissors. She went like that, took them on both ends, and she just went, shock. And, <laughs> and the fabric just slid right down. And I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's terrible, you know? <laughs> I was like, that's abuse on that fabric, you know? But anyway, I thought that was funny. I wanted to share that with you guys because I went home and, you know, and I told my mom about that and she just like cracked up and she was like, yeah, that's how we cut the fabric in the old days. You know, you know, you know, you know, the head out, you know, take the scissor, you just cut a little bit, take both ends and you just do that. And I was just like, oh, and you know, because I thought, and when she did that, I, I did it did comprehend to me that the way the fibers were going, that it would cut straight. When she did that, I was thinking maybe it's gonna cut slanted or or something, you know. <laughs> when I went home, I took the thing and yeah, I got my yard, you know. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I'm gonna um I think the next time I go to Joanne's, I'm gonna ask them and I'm gonna say, is there um type of fabric that you would not do that too, you know, um, you know, because not all fabrics are the same. So anyway, because of that little experience that I had there, I was kind of like, you know, um, you have all these fabrics and there are different textures of different types. Some are thick, some are thin, some are soft, some are rough, some are real fluffy, some are, um, you know, 100% cotton. There's just so many different variations of fabric out there. And, you know, when you are doing embroidery, it can be kind of like really, really tricky because when you are embroidering a design on a piece of fabric, you know, then you have to add your stabilizer. So a lot of times what ends up happening is, you know, I start to think to myself, okay, um, I got this fabric, it's, it's thin or thick. Um, then I have to think about what type of stabilizer, but it's really funny, you gotta think further than that, okay? It's not just the stabilizer that you're using and it's not just the thickness of the fabric. Think about the design that you are going to embroider on that fabric. Sometimes you have some designs that are so heavy in the stitches that sometimes you really can't embroider that on a particular fabric, especially like light fabric. Light fabric is not very good for dense designs because what'll happen is you'll get a lot of puckering and you know, you're gonna get a lot of the shifting in the fabrics, fabrics shift which is the whole reason why a lot of people use sometimes sticky stabilizer or when they put their stabilizer in, they go and they spray temporary um, temporary heat um, um, adhesive on it. You know, like I use KK2000, you know, the, the sticky spray that you put on there because you want to make sure that the fabric is tacked down to your um, to your stabilizer. Because fabrics can move every time, you know, you are putting a stitch in that fabric, you know, you're kind of moving the fibers in that fabric, you know, so you have to think about all of that. So, you know, but I have to tell you that that lady threw me back when she she tore that fabric, but I, mean, I got my perfect um, yard, but 
she freaked me out. So that's the whole reason why. And then I'm gonna be honest, I was thinking all the time about the different fabrics, you know. So anyway, I kind of went to the I went to New York um City um fabrics. I mean, not New York City fabrics, it's called New York Fabrics in Miami. They had a really nice, nice collection. The reason why I wanted to go there is because you know Joanne went public, right? And Joanne's fabrics is a, a store that goes everywhere, right? So whenever you go into a Joanne store, I, you know, this is just me thinking, but I think it's, I believe it's true. If you go to a Joanne's store in New York and you go one to Virginia and you go one to California or whatever, a lot of the Joanne's are going to carry very similar fabrics, okay? And the fabrics are going to be similar in the patterns and all that kind of stuff because, you know, the company's going to book buy, right? And they're going to send it to all their stores. So one of the things to make, you know, when you're in business, you know, I always think you have to be unique in some way, okay? Because you have to stand yourself out from the other folks. You know, like for instance, um, if I'm selling kitchen towels, I'm sure I'm not the only one that sells kitchen towels. There's probably a whole bunch of other people that embroider kitchen towels. But I have to come up with different designs and different sayings. And, you know, I have to try to make sure that my kitchen towels are unique from those that other people are providing. So that way, you know, I can keep my sales and my customers. Um, and it's the same thing with fabrics. When you're sewing things like bags or you're sewing like little pouches, or even if you're using the fabric for your applique designs and embroidery, you wanna make sure that they're unique. So the best way for me to find unique, um, you know, fabrics is by really shopping these little stores. Um, I like to go to the little stores out, you know, in in different areas, like even in my neighborhood. I go to um, there's a where I get my my machine from, Susie's Quilt Shop. I like going there in, in Manassas. She has a very good collection of different types of fabrics. And a lot of those fabrics, you don't find them in Joann's or anywhere else. Um, you know, so if you, you know, it's just a little something to think about, you know, when you're driving around, if you see like a little shop. Um, it is a small business, and sometimes, you know, because of small businesses, sometimes the prices can be a little more expensive than with Joann's because it's a small business, so they, they can't afford to give everybody 40% off and all that kind of stuff, you know, or else they'll, they'll be out of business. But I know me personally, because I myself am a small business owner, I like to support other small businesses. So I don't mind spending the extra money to help support them because I am asking people to support me. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, you know, one hand should, in my opinion, one hand should wash the other. So um, I like supporting, you know, small businesses, small sewing shops, small, so uh, supporting small sewing shops. Um, you know, so every time I'm driving around in my car and I see like a little fabric store or something like that, I always like to stop and I always like to go in and, and see, you know, what they have. You know, sometimes you'd be surprised you can find the most gorgeous fabrics that you wouldn't really find in Amazon or in um, Joann's or um, Hobby Lobby or, or places like that and stuff. So anyway, let me show you guys some of the fabrics that I got. Okay. Um, a lot of the fabrics that I got though are on the light side, and I have to tell you, I they're they're very 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 pretty. Um, this is one that is kind of like polyester. Um, I think it's a eighty percent polyester, twenty percent silk, something like that. It's very 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 light, and the reason why I bought this is really because I wanted to make scrunchies. I got into this scrunchie kick, okay, and what I like about making the scrunchies is you can make scrunchies to actually match your outfits, right? You know, because scrunchies can get a little pricey. I know that you can go to the dollar store and you can buy a scrunchie. Um, but the thing is, sometimes the scrunchies that they sell are kind of plain. Um, and but if you go and you can make your own, you if you think about it, you can make it from the own fabric that you want. You can make them suede. You can get them silk. Um, you know, you can get a jean. De denim or you know whatever kind um so i've been looking at these so i got this one i i thought this was really really pretty my sister nancy actually picked this one out and stuff and i liked it and i said you know what these would make good scrunchies too so i got this one um and then you know what if you wanted to embroider let's say if you want to do an applique right 
Um, like I have to do um, a shirt for my mom. My mom is going to turn 82 this year. Um, but, and her birthday is not till, um, till uh, October. My sister's in October too. Everybody in my family's a Libra. I'm the only one that's a Cancer. I'm always been different, you know? So anyway, um, I got to make her a birthday shirt. And then my sister's turning 50. I have to make her a birthday shirt too. So I was also thinking I could use these for their apple case too. Now, because this is very, very thin fabric, what I am going to do is I'm going to use um, Heat and Bond, um, this stuff. If you guys don't know what, what it is, I have um, Heat and Bond. I'm going to use this and put this in this fabric so that way when i'm done embroidering on it it you know i can just heat press it and it'll it'll stay nice and crisp you know so um i really like this fabric and stuff so um then i also got this one and it's this one's cute too i thought this would make cute scrunchies as well um i got two yards of this because i thought it was like so unique i didn't see that anywhere and stuff. And then I also bought this one because I thought this one was pretty summery. See? So I was like, this will make cute scrunchies too. And, you know, the more I look at it, this will look really cute on my appliques as well. You know, because the thing is, like I said, when I do my birthday shirts, I don't really do them for the kids. I do them more for the older adults, you know, because um, I just feel like, you know, I don't know. I, it, I I know it's kind of mean for me to say, but I just feel like sometimes, you know, when you up there and you get a new birthday, you want to celebrate, you know? <laughs> I want to celebrate too. Okay, so I'm going to make myself a birthday for my 53 because I just sometimes feel like once you pass 50, you're kind of like, hmm, you know, I'm up there, you know? <laughs> so anyway, um, and then this is a fabric that I know this was um, recommended to me by Harmony when she was making her face mask. And these were Garnadine, I think it's Garnadine fabric. And um, it's really, really, really thick. And I thought these would make, you know, I was trying to do the, the same face mask. I could not do it as good as her. Tried it. She's she's the queen. She's got that crown. She's got it. She's, you know, she she should she needs to wear that proudly because I couldn't get it. So, but I figured what else can I do with this fabric? And what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to use these for scrunchies as well. So I'm going to, you know, I just kind of decided that on my Etsy shop, I'm going to do a, uh, you know, the way I have it on my, my shop is I've been doing like collection lines, right? So I have like kitchen, uh, kitchen towel collections. Then I have like baby, and kids collections. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a scrunchie collection in there. And then I'm just gonna make a bunch of scrunchies and stuff like that. And, um, you know, use some of the fabric that I have, you know, and see how that goes. Um, so and let me also talk to you guys about, cause I know that on the embroidery happy hour, I wanted to talk about fabrics and I wanna talk about stabilizers, okay? Um, you know, fabrics come in different types different weights, um, you know, and because it comes so, it, it there's such a big variation of the different types of fabric, right? And you're going to embroider. One of the questions that I usually get a lot is they're like, what stabilizer do I have to use? And I always say the best thing to do is look at the fabric and look at your embroidery design. Now, the embroidery design is extremely, extremely important, right? Because that is what you have chosen that you want to actually stitch out. Now, what you have to do is you got to make sure that whatever material and whatever stabilizer you're using to stitch out that design, that it's actually going to come out looking really nicely. And it's going to give it a nice, clean, crisp um, look. Now, if you don't think about these things, you could end up with puckering. And puckering is when you are stitching and you see that by the edges of your embroidery design, it looks like the fabric kind of crunched up a bit, okay? That's like um, puckering. Another problem you can run into too is if you do not properly stabilize your, your fabric, you can end up having the design go out of whack. And what I mean is sometimes the, the outline of the design isn't gonna match. The, your design is just not gonna come out good as well. 
And then you can also have problems with um, your stabilizer going up. Oh, hey, Aqua Broom. Oh, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> she gave me super chat. <laughs> Good stuff. You guys need to subscribe to her channel. She's like really cool. I like watching her lives. And so, <laughs> anyway, um, so, oh man, you threw me off track. Okay, <laughs> now, um, what do you call, uh, what was I talking about? Okay, okay, stabilizers and fabrics, stabilizers and fabrics. Okay, here we go. So if you don't look at your design and see how, um, you know, how it's laid out, okay? Do you have a lot of stitches? If you have something that is very much in detail, right? Very rich, like thousands of stitches and stuff like that, then a lot of times you do not want to use a thin fabric. Like for instance, like the fabrics that I use, that I just showed you that I picked up at New York, uh, these are not very good for embroidering on, okay? And and I'm gonna and let me let me give you some some for you to think about too, okay? Not everything can be embroidered, okay? It's not, it's not a sticker that you're putting on cloth, okay? You're talking about stitches. So think about that, okay? Think about the design. So if you have like a customer that comes out with this crazy design, okay? Something that's very, very thick. And then they say, you know, if they came to me, and let me tell you, it's happened. And they come to me and they go, well, Jeanette, you know, I got this silk napkin. And I want you to put... I want you to embroider, let's say the logo of the Department of Defense or something like that, or, or, or an Air Force logo, something that's very thick and detailed. I flat out say no, because I already know that the fabric is extremely thin, okay? And in order for me to get that embroidery file on that thin fabric, you know how many layers of stabilizer I would have to put on? It's not worth it. And think about it too. You, I, I don't I can't even tell you off the bat how many layers I would need. So that's a lot of testing that I would have to do. So I, I have to I have to be honest. I mean, if you're up for the challenge, go for it. Me personally, mm -mm, for the simple reason that if I kind of am experienced enough that I know what works and what doesn't. OK, and if I'm in the mood, I guess you could say I'm in the mood and I'm up for the challenge, then OK, I'll take it because it's something that I want to learn. But if I know off the bat that a design that a customer wants is not going to work on a particular fabric, I tell them right off the bat, nope, I'm not going to do that. You can either pick a different type of fabric, and I'll recommend the type of fabrics that'll work. Like, for instance, I would recommend a heavier fabric so that I can use cutaway stabilizer. But, you know, it's just something that just think about that because it could be really, really frustrating. A perfect example of that is if you ever watched a video, an old video that I did, I think I did it last year, where I did the 36 shirts, okay? That had nothing to do with the customer. That was all me. That was, that was my problem. It was my fault. The customer told me, pick whatever shirts you want, okay? All they wanted was lettering. I was the one that went the extra mile and said, okay, I know that these guys, it's, it's, it's a... Uh, flooring company. I know these guys are going to be sweating. They're, it's hard labor. They're going to want very comfortable, soft shirts. Okay. I did not think at the time that those comfortable, soft shirts can be very difficult to embroider, even if it's all I'm embroidering is let, lettering. So that was a very difficult learning curve. But in, in actuality, it's a learning curve that I kind of welcome because if I didn't take that challenge on, I wouldn't have learned how to do that. So in a way, I'm kind of grateful for that. But um, I will tell you this. Now I know off the bat what kind of, I, I need heavy, not medium weight or lightweight. I need heavy cutaway stabilizer if I want to embroider on a Calabamas shirt. And these were the shirts that I was embroidering on. And these are the, the Cala, the Bella, Bella um, canvas. They're very thin. They are thin, okay? And what problems that I was having with this is, remember, thin, thin fabrics shift, okay? They shift. So you got to make sure that you're using the right stabilizer, and you got to make sure that you are hooping them correctly. So what I had to do with these shirts was I had to use a heavy cutaway stabilizer, and I didn't just use the heavy, uh, heavy stabilizer. I also used temporary um, 
heat, uh, temp I keep saying heat, but it's temporary uh, adhesive, adhesive spray. So that way the fibers would not shift on me, okay? Just because you have it on the right stabilizer doesn't mean that the fabric won't move. You gotta make sure you hoop that baby right, okay? And at the same time, what I did was I, I ended up investing in the right equipment. So what I did was I went and I purchased a um, Mighty Hoop a hooping station. I used my Mighty Hoops. I used the cutaway stabilizer along with some spray, um, temporary spray adhesive to make sure that the fabric stayed stable. And then I was ready to go. I was able to just um, go ahead and just pump these babies out. And it was 36 shirts. And then he, you know, and then the guy liked them so much, he ordered 20 more. So I was just like, okay. So, you know, before these shirts, though, what I was embroidering on was, I mean, you guys know me. I'm, I'm, I'm all about saving money. I was going straight to Michael's. I was getting the Gildan shirts. 100% cotton, but the problem, and these are heavy. These are heavy, okay? These embroidered just fine. I never had any issues with these. The only reason why I didn't go with these shirts, like I said, it was because I knew that these were um, workers that, you know, work with their hands and they were going to be sweating a lot and everything. And knowing that this is 100% cotton and they were heavy, this is really just not going to be very comfortable for them to wear while they're working right so i really wanted them to have a very good comfortable shirt um but i know that if i would have chose this i would have embroidered that baby like nothing it would have been like Phew, here's your here's your 36 shirts it would have been great um i still would have used cut away because one of the things that remember if you wear it you cut it away okay if you're going to be wearing a shirt okay shirts Remember, people wear them, they get dirty, you know, they eat, they, you know, spaghetti gets on them, whatever. They're going to throw them in washing machines. After the washing machines, they're going to throw them into a dryer, right? So those stitches are going to go through all that. So if you are embroidering on something that is being worn, a hat, okay? And I'm talking about like, um, I don't know, just a, a regular knit hat, um, stuff like that, you know, use the cutaway if you can. Um, you know, or what I usually do with the knit hats is I embroider a uh, file, I mean, uh, a frame around it. Um, I just did a video this week on embossed files. I showed a video on how I did the towels for my mom and dad. That's called embossed files. You can get those files and it's just a square. Those would be perfect for knit hats in the wintertime because that will those those stitches are solid and then you can just type um put in i was going to say type but you can embroider the the person's name in the box on that um knit hat and that you know those would be really really good um in those type of things because of the way the file is is um is embroidering that it's just going across all those stitches are going to be pretty solid so i i think a tearaway would probably be okay with a knitted hat and stuff but just something i want to put out there anyway but um you know depending on you know what you are what you're embroidering and what and the, the fabric that will determine on your stabilizer and stuff like that um let me see what else i have here oh also if you're doing blankets like this right um I am kind of torn on this. I, I I have all these. I also have these in my shop. I'm selling the blanks as well if you want any of these. But um, when I embroidered this, I actually used cutaway stabilizer in the back, okay? And I have the cutaway right here. I didn't cover it up or anything because these are just my samples, okay? But if I was going to sell this to a um, customer, when I embroidered these, one of the things that I would do is I would go ahead and I would put tender touch in the back of it. Um, I am a little torn because um, these fabrics, you know, this quilt does not really stretch, okay? And usually on stuff that does not stretch, I usually will use cutaway, right? So I'm kind of looking at this and I'm thinking this could be a cutaway uh, pro project, I mean, tearaway, tearaway um, instead of cutaway. I was using, let me correct it. I was using cutaway, but I'm thinking about using tearaway. 
because the fabric does not stretch, okay? That is usually the rule of thumb that I use when I'm using um, tear-away stabilizer, okay? If I have a particular fabric like jeans, right? Let's say jeans, a jean jacket. The jean jacket, you look at the fabric, it's pretty tough. You know, if you go like this to it and stuff, there's really no give to it. It's not going to stretch or anything like that. So with those types of fabrics, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and then I will just use tear away for those particular uh, fabrics because I know that they're pretty sturdy. And at the same time, jackets don't go in the wash every week. They'll usually go in the wash maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe two or three times a year, maybe, if anything. So, you know, a lot of times with the tear away, it's like I, I kind of look at it like if the fabric has no give to it, like no type of stretch or anything, then I would use the um, tear away and stuff. Now, on my kitchen towels, okay, I use the tear aways on my kitchen towels because my kitchen towels really are for decorative, okay? They're not, you know, towels to be using kind of, you know? <laughs> um, you can if you want to, you know? But um, when I, I embroider my kitchen towels, I do use the tear away stabilizer. And then in the back, I put the tender touch on it so that it gives it a nice clean backing and stuff. That's what I've been doing on those and everything. Let me see what else I got. I pulled out some stuff to show you guys. Oh, and also, if you guys have a Walmart by you, and I think Walmart is like almost everywhere and stuff. When you are looking for fabrics, these are one of the ones that I'm always picking out, okay? Walmart has all these that are so, so cool and stuff. Hey, Eve, I see Eve from the baby booty. <laughs> Love her channel <laughs> and stuff. But um, uh, these, these are really inexpensive. You can get, it's, it's Fat Quarters. Fat Quarters, they have so many. Look at all these. And I have more, I have more in the back. These are really, really good if you're doing appliques or little small projects and stuff like that. You don't have to spend like a whole, you know, bunch of money and stuff. I mean, Walmart, I don't know, I find these at Walmart and I think they, they work great. They have a great variety of different patterns and all that kind of stuff. So I find that these are really, really, really good. So, and, and you know me, if there's a way to save a dollar, I'm gonna look for it, okay? And stuff. So, you know, and don't think, you know, and don't think that I'm saying, you know, that Joanne's is out for me because let me tell you, as long as Joanne has those coupons, okay, and as long as Joanne gives out those military discounts, you know, I'm there, you know, because I went to Joanne's with my sister and, you know, I bought fabric from them too. And I even got some scissors and stuff. And she had her 50% coupon and then I had my uh, military ID. So that was an extra 15%. So, I mean, I was kind of like, hey, you know. <laughs> Love saving my money, okay? So, you know, let me see what else. Oh, and I also want to talk to you guys also. Um, When I went to um, Florida, right, um, one of the things, and I should have videotaped this, but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think of it at the time when I was doing it. My mom, um, she, she used to sew. Um, she used to work in a factory when she was young, when she was like 16 years old, right? Because unfortunately, you know, I never got to meet my grandparents or anything. I didn't, I, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't never have that privilege because they died um, when my mom was young and, and on my dad's side too. So, um, you know, my mom, you know, she had to, she was on her own at a very young age. So she worked at a factory and she used to sew. And um, all she did, you know, she knows about the, the sewing machines and everything. But when I bought the 1900 to her house and, um, you know, I was showing her, you know, I was looking at her machine, which was the England 1968. And then, you know, I was doing a side by side of her machine on and my machine, the machines that are now. Um, it, I really wish I had videotaped that. That was a moment that I really lost because to see her face, I mean, she was just really at like awe at how machines have really, really come a long way from when she was sewing back in the day, you know? And one of the things that I had did was I had set up the SC-1900 in the um, dining room 
And I started to, um, you know, embroider a um, baby onesie. And this was the one that I did. And I did this baby onesie. And this is an applique. Um, and this is from one of the um, fabrics that um, I believe I purchased that fabric from Joann's and stuff. But I did this little applique. And it was really, it was neat to, um, to start the process and then have her sit in the chair and, you know, teach her how the embroidery works. I mean, to see her face brighten up and everything, that was just like so awesome, you know, because she was just really at awe at how, you know, how machines have come, you know? And, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, so guys, I'm serious. If, if you're, you know, if your mom, if, if you have your mom still with you, um, I, you know, I highly recommend doing what I had did you know, um, videotape you and her doing a project together because that was so, I mean, it was so like, I don't know. I mean, I feel bad because a lot of it was kind of like in Spanish and I was trying to, to translate as much as I could through the whole video and stuff. Um, but those two ladies were a trip, you know, <laughs> they, um, they really cracked me up. And they made me so super nervous because every time I tried to sew, I mean, <laughs> the way my mom was giving me that eye, you know, and then my aunt was already going, oh, you're not going to do well. <laughs> I mean, it was just like really fun. I mean, they had me cracking up. So anyway, I got sidetracked. Okay. So anyway, but um, these are carters. I, I like to get the onesies, the carters. And the reasons why I like these is because they're pretty thick. One of the things that I used to do is I used to get the Gerber brand. The Gerber brands are okay, and I have some here. But the thing is, if I was to, and, and if you go to um, Walmart or Kohl's, okay, this is one thing. This is what I did. You take them both, you know, just pick them up, and then put your hands inside of them and feel the fabric and stuff. And, you know, um, you kind of know. The, the more you embroider and the more you sew, the more, I, I don't know, it's like I, you get that touch. I'm calling it like, let's call it the fabric touch, okay? You kind of know the type of fabric that it it becomes easier to embroider on, okay? And then you can, you know, because like I look at the Gerber now and I used to embroider on this. I used to use sticky stabilizer on it because it kept shifting and everything. But when I really look at it, it's kind of thick and it really is super stick. Uh, stre uh, stretchy. So when it's super stretchy, it, it kind of does, can pose some challenges if you don't hoop this right and use the right stabilizer. And, you know, and also I think speed can sometimes do a little play in this as well. I notice sometimes when I slow down my machine, it can kind of embroider a little better on thin fabrics. I kind of noticed that. So I'm kind of like, you know, I started thinking about that, like when I was doing video on the metallic thread, you know, everybody was like, you got to try the thread, you got to try the thread. So I finally tried it. And one of the things that I did was I slowed down the speed to the machine at 500 stitches per minute versus having it go the whole 650 or 1,000 uh, stitches per minute. I've, I've never had a metallic thread break on me as of yet. And that's sewing it at 500. So it seems like 500 seems to be like my magic number kind of thing. So when it comes to thin fabrics, I I don't know, um, but I, I've always done that too. I lower the speed of my machine, okay? Because sometimes I feel that the faster that machine is sewing, the tougher it is really knocking on that fabric and it can cause it to shift a lot more, okay? So I think that by slowing down the machine, I feel that the, the needle is more gently going inside the fabric in and out, and it's, it's less less movement of the fabric on that on that hoop. I don't know if that makes sense, but I could be wrong, I don't know, but, but that's just my frame of mind, because my whole thing is, I guess when I'm embroidering, I kind of, I don't know, it's like, I guess the more you embroider, the more you kind of understand how the bobbin, you know, how how the 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 bobbin thread and how the thread and then how the machine, how it all kind of 
marries itself together, right? So it's kind of like it, it's kind of like I tell people, like, like you hear a lot of people, they come on, they say, don't touch the tension of the machine. Okay. And I got that. I understand that. You you really should, you you shouldn't. The machine, when you get it out the box, the tension should be great and everything like that. But the thing is, you have to, within time, learn the mechanics of that machine. You have to learn how that machine works, why certain things work a certain way, what what is the effect of certain things, okay? Now, I do I do mess with my tension when I have to, okay? When I when you know, when I get my machine from the sewing shop after it's being serviced, of course, you know, when Justin does my servicing on my machines, he does an ex excellent job and I don't have to touch the tension. And I can go ahead and I can sew and everything works great. But as time goes on, next thing you know, you will notice that sometimes, you know, depending on the type of, you know, fabric and all that kind of stuff, sometimes your, your tensions do need to get adjusted, okay? So my whole thing is, this is what I, I, and this is just me, this is what I think. It's like, okay, I can take my machine in all the time to get the tension fixed, okay, and pay a hundred and something dollars to have that machine serviced. Or I can take the initiative to try to understand the machine and learn how to fix as much as I can. Another thing that you can do is something that I do as well, is when someone is working on my machine, I like to be there, okay? Or if I can't be there, I'll ask the questions. How do you do this? How did you do that? And stuff like that. Because I wanna learn my machine. I wanna learn how the whole mechanics work. Because once you learn that machine, and you learn all the functions, which is the whole reason why I did the series of the on the nineteen on the SC nineteen hundred, right? I went and I said, "Hey, what does this foot do? What is this foot for?" You're discovering that machine piece by piece. Learn the machine. Learn all the functionality. Learn what it does. Why it does what it does. Because all that's going to do is improve your skill, and it's going to make you better. And it's going to make your embroidery come out nicer. It's going to, you know, it's, it's going to build your confidence and you're going to know your machine. And before you know it, you're never going to want to get rid of that machine because you're like, oh, that's my baby. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it's just something I want to put out there. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, but um, yeah, so, you know, like I said, because you know your machine and everything, um, you eventually know what fabrics you feel comfortable working with. Okay. Now, there is one thing that I do want to try. I saw, you know, that during weddings, okay, um, you know, I like to go on Etsy a lot and I like to see what's selling, what's not, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, summer's here. There's a lot of weddings and all that kind of stuff that's coming on. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to search to see what's big on the wedding thing, right? You know, on in, in weddings, what are, what are people buying in the embroidery area for weddings. And a lot of times people are buying handkerchiefs. And sometimes on the handkerchiefs they have these really nice sayings, you know, that's, you know, for the for the father of the bride or the mother of the bride. And they have these little cute handkerchiefs with a little saying in it and stuff. Now, some of it I noticed is heat vinyl transfer, but some of these handkerchiefs are embroidered. And you know, handkerchiefs are kind of very thin material, okay? And the way I look at it is it's probably as thin as the material on this. Um, this is um, 80% polyester, 20% silk. So it's probably, it's super thin. So to me, I'm like, oh, I know that to embroider something like this, um, and it's a handkerchief. So if it's a handkerchief, I don't think I would want to use cutaway. I probably want to use tearaway and then put tender touch in the back. Um, but because it's so thin, um, I would probably use a 69, 11 size needle. And I would make sure that I get um, also um, not the, the thread. The thread, I usually use a number 40. I'll probably go a little higher because I heard the higher the number, the thinner the thread. So if you're using small letters, you really want thin, thin thread. Um, and also there was, there's an article that I always, always refer a lot of people to. If you Google this fabrics, 101 stabilizer and design guide, 
this is a really, really good article. I'm telling you. I mean, this is something that I use heavily. Um, you know, I have it right by my embroidery machines, you know, and whenever I'm embroidering, it tells you the fabric, the stabilizer, and the design. That's the one thing that I really like is look, it'll tell you if you have um look choose light if you have let me, let me pick a fabric that i can pronunciate okay <laughs> let's see uh let me see if they have like poly polyester because i i have the polyester one on me now um let's see hold on i'm looking Oh, they don't have poly? Oh, satin. Okay, here's satin. Okay, here you go. I'm going to make my throat dry. Uh, okay, reading this, it says satin, and then it says you can use either cutaway or tearaway, may be used for simple and light design. So right away, you, you kind of know if you got a very heavy, dense design, satin material is not going to work. It's not, it's not good. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't do that. And then it says choose designs of low to medium complexity. And then it also tells you the type of needle, 7511 sharp needle. An embroidery needle may also be used, which probably means you could probably use a ballpoint pen, but I would probably use sharp. Okay. So this article is really, really good, guys. I'm telling you, I, I refer to it all the time. Whenever I'm embroidering and I'm looking at the fabric and then I go, okay, what type of fabric is this? I go straight to this and this will tell me exactly what stabilizer I should be using, what design I should be using, even the needle, okay, and stuff. And this is another tip too. Also, before you embroider, do a test, do a test. And the test doesn't have to be the exact same design. I'm not saying take the same design because, you know, you can have a design that takes 45 minutes to make. You don't want to do a 45-minute test, okay? So what I would do is get a design that's similar on a smaller scale, okay? That's pretty similar, but just on a smaller. And then put it in a in, on the hoop and just test it out just to see how it comes out. Are you getting per, uh, puckering? Is Are you seeing the white bobbins in the front? Because... The last thing you want is for you to make, you know, put your product in the machine. And then all of a sudden, when you start embroidering, it's all jacked up. And then what ends up happening is you got to replace the jacket, the shirt, whatever it is. And you got to run to the store and, you know, replace it. And then think about it, that's money out of your pocket, too. Okay. So it, there's nothing wrong with taking a piece of the same similar fabric, cutting it up, and doing a sample run just to see how it goes. And another thing, too, you could do with the sample run is, you know, you can use that to show your customer. You could do that. You know, you could say, okay, this is the fabric. I'm going to cut a piece of it. We're going to test your whole design. And you can show the customer this is how it's going to look. Do you like the colors? Do you like anything? Because the last thing you want is for you to stitch out the whole thing. And then you give it to the customer and they go, oh, I would have I would have preferred a red color or oh, maybe I, a blue would have looked better or something. You know what? You know, try to do try to be as straightforward as possible in the beginning and stuff. And then I'm gonna tell you something else too. Um, do not, and I'm gonna tell you guys, don't let people hustle you when it comes to your prices. Okay, you know your worth, you know how hard it is to do what you do okay um and I, and the reason why i'm gonna say that i'm gonna just say okay this happened to me last week <laughs> well not last well the when i before i went to florida i had someone reach out to me and um they wanted you know i have the baby blankets right and what they did was they ordered a baby blanket but then at the note they put all this extra stuff they wanted so what i did was i just refunded the money and i said no that's a custom order okay personally i think that person was just trying to hustle it don't work that way <laughs> not with me <laughs> they picked the wrong chick okay so um just this, one of the things that i was talking to with somebody about embroidery because they she does embroidery also is me and her were talking about that and we were saying you know there's a lot of people a lot of new people that you know and they're new to embroidery and they're you know they're really um 
they're they're pricing their items really really low and one of the things is that you got to think about is when you are pricing your items low you really are doing a disservice really to yourself that's something that i, I just want to put out there and i'm gonna tell you why i know that you're you want those customers hell we all do right we all want the customers we all want the dime but the thing is that you have to think about the hard work that you do you have to think about all the expense that you have okay you got the expense of the machine you got the expects the you you spent money on that stabilizer you spent money on your products you know your time your time is money too how about the designs those is those embroidery designs are not free okay so you know and, and it's work okay and there are some people that they charge a hooping fee okay now i don't charge hooping, but, but some people do that some people have rules of thumbs where they say this is how much it is for a hooping fee. This is how much it is for the file, the embroidery file. This is how much it is to, um, you know, for the stabilizer. They will charge for everything, okay? And they say for every thousand stitches, it's a dollar. So if you have a design that's only like, thir you know, 30,000 um, 30, stitches, that's 30 bucks right there. Then you charge the hooping fee and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, there are people out there, they're saying, oh, I could, I'll, I'll do that shirt for 10 bucks, 15 bucks. You know, I, I kind of, what goes through my mind is, are you recouping um, every, you know, are, are you really, it's not sustainable. That's all I'm saying. You can't, you can't, you can't always be uh, pricing too low because it's not sustainable as a business. Because if you really think about it, when you are in business, it's really to make a profit. It's to make money. Okay. You're not going to make money if you are undermining your prices. So I just want to put that out there. And the other thing too, is do not let people devalue you or your work, you know, be confident in it. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, I've said it before in my Etsy shop. If, if I get a little bit of a hint that a customer is a, a problem is, is, you know, kind of like iffy or whatever, I'll pass on the sale, go to somebody else. They, they'll sell it to you. You know, I don't have to sell to everybody. You know, that's just how I see it. You know, I mean, do, you know, do I like change? Hell, who doesn't like change? But the thing is, you know, I mean, what's it going to cost you in the long run? Okay. Because sometimes you can have a customer that will be a customer of hell and you do everything that they want. And then you end up with a bad review. Think about that. So to me, it's like, you know, you just, you got to really think about those things, you know? So it's just something to think about and then be careful, be careful. Cause then, then, then you have those people that are kind of shady. They know, they know what, <laughs> People try to get anything out of you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Maybe that's why I don't have any friends. I don't know. <laughs> you, you just don't know. Anyway. But I'm just saying, know your self-worth. Don't let, you know, you, do your thing. Do your thing. Be confident. You got this. Don't, you know, everything in due time. Everything in due time. Everything takes time. Nobody, you know, nothing, nothing happens overnight. Even when you look at the great leaders that we've had, like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, and all that stuff, their success came within time. They all, we all go through our struggles in the beginning and everything like that. What's important is that you don't quit, you keep your head up, and you keep going. That's, that's all I'm trying to say, you know. So anyway, I got so off track, to, off track today. But let me go back because, you know, I like to say every, say hi to everybody. Oh, it's almost nine o'clock, too, and stuff. Hey, Robin, how you doing? I see Miss Samsung. Um, hey, Tracy. Hey, Portia. Hey, Lisa. Making dreams come true. I love that. I like that. Making dreams come true. I think that's so, so awesome. Hey, Samsung. Hey, Barb, how are you? Walk by faith. Hey, Karen, Julie. I see Carol and Sarah, Julie. Okay, you actually get it straighter when you rip it. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Julie. She freaked me out. <laughs> I mean, you. I, I kind of wish that somebody had videotaped my face when she did that because I never saw somebody do that before. I never saw somebody take a pair of scissors, just cut an edge, and just take both ends and rip it. I mean, I was just floored. I mean, I was like, I was like, 
like, oh my God, what did you just do? You ruined it. And she was like, no, I didn't ruin it. And I said, I wanted a yard. And she just started laughing. I mean, she actually laughed at me because she was like, it comes out straight, the fibers. Now, I ain't going to lie. Now, it's like I have this curiosity about it. And I like want to take one of mine and I want to cut it and try it to see. But I'm afraid that it'll ruin it. <laughs> so I don't know. It just freaked me out. But I was just like, oh, my God, that must be the Latina way to cut fabric. You just cut a little bit and go, Choo, you know, like get all that anger out of something. I was like, oh, my God. But she freaked me out. Julie, I'm telling you, if you were there, you would have laughed. <laughs> hey, Liniana, how are you? I loved your life today and stuff. And let me tell you, um, her she's in pro print now. She has been embroidering for 25 years. So she was little, her whole family. So it was funny because when she was talking about it during her life, what I was thinking about was John Deere. John Deere is another, is a gentleman that has a YouTube channel also. And I believe Eve from the Baby Booty, she interviewed him. And I watched that. That was like really, really cool. I remember when she did that, I was just like, Oh my God, she's talking to John Deere. Because John Deere, his whole family had generations in the embroidery business. And Liliana's the same way. I mean, she was talking about her when she was little, um, like six years old and stuff. Everybody, you know, was in business, you know? So I think that was like so, so cool. And so, so I loved your life today. I hope you do so many more because I'm on there. <laughs> I am truly there. Hey, Ozzy, how are you? And so, hey, Miriam, how you doing? You get a complete yard doing this. Hey, Carol, I guess everybody was familiar with the cutting of that fabric like that. Tear it up. That was the first time she sold fabric for 30 years, and now they cut the old. <laughs> and now that's how they cut the oldest. Yep, that's what, she, that's what she told me. I mean, I was just, I was shocked. I was just shocked. And my mom, my mom was like, well, what's wrong with that? That's how I cut it. I was like, really? I was like, that's fabric abuse. That's what I was saying. I was going around the house going fabric abuse. Oh, my God. I've never seen anybody cut fabric like that. And I buy it from a lot of shops. Yeah, that, I, the same way. I've always seen people with the table and the, and the IDs, the rotary color. They just slice it or a pair of scissors. That rip freaked me out. I'm telling you, <laughs> love that chick, Jeanette. Oh my goodness. Um, No matter how careful I try to be, I sometimes ruin a project, which sucks. Iris, don't worry. I mean, we all make mistakes. And you know, and I'm gonna be honest, embrace the mistakes, seriously, because I've made so many, but with every mistake you learn, honestly, you do. You, you know, I mean, I know it kind of sounds cliche, but it is true because I've, I've, I've learned how to truly put in my bobbin correctly, okay? Because you don't know how many times I put my bobbin in wrong. Um, I've learned how to really, truly thread the machine correctly and how you're supposed to lay down your fabric and sew and all that kind of stuff. And you guys saw I, I bought a whole bunch of sewing guides so that I could learn how to sew straight because I mean I'd be all, I would be sewing and I'd be like you know all over the place I'd be like what that's that's look straight to me you know <laughs> so I mean mistakes is how you learn and the more you practice trust me you're gonna get better and better and better and better I mean we you know so don't let any of that discourage you don't um, hey, Barb, first time I ripped the fabric was in a Herman class, and it was basket. It was very expensive, no issues, ricking, putting down straight grain. Oh, my God, I would have been freaking out. I would have been like, that's expensive fabric. I can't do that. You know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Love watching you, your mom, and your Oh, thanks, Miss Max. And so that was so, I mean, I loved it. You know, and, and when I came back from Miami, I was a little sad because I was thinking to myself, you know, my mom, she lives in Florida and I live here. My sister's pretty fortunate because she lives in Miami too. So it's like they get to do the, the dinners together and all that kind of stuff. 
unfortunately because of my career and stuff, I've always been kind of like out on the skirts, right? So it's it's like I got to visit like once a year and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, when I got there, I kind of like, I don't know, I guess too, when you get older, you start realizing really how important family is. And um, you know, I just missed that, you know, I just really did it. It, it kind of, you know, it hurt a little bit when I had to come back. But it's, it's all good. I mean, I'm just going to have to make more frequent trips to her. And if anything, I would love to fly her in so that she could see, you know, because she has not seen my sewing room. and She has not, you know. So if that, if the SE 1900 made her eyes like, oh, my God, look, you could do that. I could only imagine how her, how big her eyes are going to get when she sees the multi-needle machine and how it works, you know, and stuff. Not only that, I put her to work too. You know, <laughs> Harmony is the queen of face. Yes, she is. She is definitely, and the hats. She and I don't know if you guys have been watching her. Um, Harmony Ling. Uh, she has a YouTube channel. She has been exploring hats on her Melco uh, multi needle. She has been doing gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, literally gorgeous hats. I'm like, wow. I mean, she is. That is one thing about that girl. When she gets into something, it's it's like top notch all the way. I'm like, I, I could just see her getting really big. I really can and stuff. And, and I'll be a, a very loyal customer to her too, because she's her her products are gorgeous. She really does really nice work and stuff. My hat is off to her. You know, what date is your birthday? I'm a cancer July 6th, big, but I am July 16th, Karen. I am July 16th. So eight days after you and oh, you turned 70 this year. And I am, I'm going to be, yeah, 53, 53. Am I 53? 68. Um, I don't know. You, you know, you stop counting once you hit 50. You're like, ah, it's, it's another year. It's just another year. You know, I always think 50 is like that middle mark and stuff. Aqua Boom Bouquet, thank you so much for the super chat, mama. And so I love that. I love her channel. I mean, she does some lives and they're like so cool and stuff. Oh, Carol's the 22nd and stuff. We should do um embroidery, uh, happy hour embroidery birthday months. <laughs> Inez, we're in the 70s club. All right. That sounds so cool and stuff. Hey, Angela. Um, let's see. Hey, Tammy. Remember to smash that like button. Yes, guys. If you like this video, please hit the smash button and stuff. Hey, Lucy Lou. Hey, Tammy. Um, let me see. Any more videos? Any more? Even if the fabric. Okay. Oh, the mom taught. Oh, my mom taught me. Wait a minute. I think I skipped a couple here. I'm sorry. Um. Oh, somebody put happy birthday, Diane. Happy birthday, Diane. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I did skip some. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. Uh oh boy. Okay. There we go. Um, let's see. Remember to like the video, help Jeanette's channel. Uh, thank you, Aqua Boom. Um Grandson's birthday's tomorrow. I saw Ozzy. Hey, Dr. Mary, Angela. Um, let's see. Not a fan of the Bella Canvas. I use sport text or Glennon shirts. Hey, Barb. You know, yeah, you know what? I have not tried sport tech, and I think I'm going to try it. Um, let me know if you got those from Jiffy shirts. That's usually where I get my shirts from. Um, if I'm looking at the Gildan shirts, I usually do buy those on Michaels because sometimes they do have them on sale. And then when they have them on sale, I get to use my military discount because, um, you know, if you're a military or a teacher, you you get um, a discount from them also. And then now Michaels has the rewards. They had a rewards program for a long time. OK, and they weren't doing like nothing with it. Now they're actually, um, you know, whenever you buy stuff, they're actually doing Michael rewards. And stuff, and I think Joanne's is starting to do the same thing too, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm like, oh, Hobby Lobby better get on it, boy. Because let me tell you, Hobby Lobby, I think got a they took away their their coupons and all that kind of stuff, and they don't offer military discount. <laughs> I'm like, what's up with that? You know, like their stores are nice. I'll give you that, but you know, 
I'm like, they need to get on the ball, you know? But I'm like, oh, well. But I'm sure they're not losing any money because it is a billion-dollar business and stuff. So, you know, maybe they don't need to give coupons. I don't know. Now, construction companies, I do shirts for want the cotton shirts because they are up north. Yep. Okay. Well, if they're up north, then that means they're probably the cold. But here it gets cold too. But I remember when I got the order, Barb, it was like during the summertime. And all I kept thinking was those poor guys are going to be sweating and stuff. So I, you know, I was like, okay, let me just do that that shirt. So when I bought those shirts, I, I showed it to the owner and the owner was like, yep, I like them. And I was like, okay, cool. And I thought they were going to be easy to embroider, but boy, did I learn the hard way um, about stabilizer and all that kind of stuff. Um, I used tearaway on the quilted blanket and it worked just fine. Oh, thank you, Liliana. Okay, then I'm going to start doing that because I was doing the um, cutaway on the quilted blankets and stuff. Um, oh, somebody, yeah. Hey, Eve. So, um, <laughs> Everybody sees Eve. I do the same on my towels. Close my eyes and I walk past the back. The back quarter shaking my head. <laughs> Sounds like mom. No, Miss. I don't think mom's gonna get an SC nineteen hundred because, and I'm gonna tell you why. My mom, she's kind of up there, and um, you know, she, I don't know, she's so attached to that that machine that she has that. I'm gonna be honest, when, whenever I showed her something that my SC1900 was doing, she was like, oh, no, 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 that's no good, that's no good. She goes, this is how you do it. So <laughs> she was all on her machine. Now I am going to tell you, those machines from back in the day, those were solid. I mean, completely steel. If you see the video, I mean, it, it's, it's heavy, very, very, very heavy. And it's in that, that furniture, and I mean, it's just like, they don't make machines like that no more. So I don't think, she, even if I got her that machine, I don't think she would want it. She would probably stick with her England um, 1968 machine and stuff. Um, you have me wanting an SC1900. Hey, Miss Linda, I, I'm gonna be honest, the, um, Miss Linda, look, when you look at my channel, you will see I have a whole bunch of videos on the SC1900 and how it works. So that'll help you out making your decision and stuff like that on what's the best machine for you. And so I will say I've had my machine now for three years. I actually love it. Um, you know, sometimes I get an itch about getting a Jujuki or getting a, a just a straight stitch machine. But then when I kind of like, think about it. I'm like, well, I got the SC1900. I mean, do I really need a machine? I don't know. I keep going back and forth. Do I need a machine to really stitch 1500 stitches per minute? I mean, is it that necessary? So I don't think right now at this point in my life that I'm pretty, that I need another machine. Um, I have sometimes I done, but I think the SC1900 is perfect for me right now. It's, it fits my needs. So, you know, I'll just keep say, socking my, my pennies away. And if, if the requirement does end up in the future that I really need a faster machine, then that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll make a decision then. Um, I am kind of torn about a uh, Jujuki TL2010Q machine and the ver and the brother uh, PSL, uh, I think it's uh, 1500, something like that. Um, two machines, very similar. Um, I think uh, Aisha from uh, The Crafty Teacher, she just unboxed one and I, and I, you know, and I sent her a message right away and I was like, oh my God, I, I was looking at that machine and I was thinking about buying it. So I'm hoping that she does a lot of videos on that machine because I, I just really want to see what's, you know, what it's all about and stuff. Um, but I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I really don't. It's just, you know what it is. You, just, you, you look at all this stuff and then you're like, oh, you know, but then, you know, it, it's like, um, I don't know. You look at it, you want it, but then like the practical side settles in, and then you go, okay, Jeanette, like, do you really need that right now? And then I'm like, eh, no, not really. But maybe in the future. I don't know. We'll see. I prefer the Carter over the um, hey Diane. Um, 
Oh, happy, yeah, you birthday, um, June 30th. You just, two days ago. And stuff. Um, okay, Aqua Blue, um, prefer the Carter over the, yep. And I do too, because I feel like the Carter is is a thicker, it's thicker, and, and I feel it's, it's just better for embroidery. I don't know. I, that's just me and stuff. Um, let's see what we got, what we got, what we got. I agree. I usually, when I embroider, I reduce the speed. It just looks way better. Yeah, I mean, I just feel that sometimes, um, you know, it, it, I don't know, especially when it comes to embroidery. I love embroidery. I truly do. I can sit there and watch that needle go up and down. It's 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 a big thing for me. I don't know. I mean, some people are like, oh, I can just press the button, and walk away. How can you walk away? I mean, because to me, I just look at it as art. That's, that's how I see it. I see it as his art. So I can sit there and I can stare at that thing going up and down. So it doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't have, I'm good with, with reducing the speed. And I just feel like sometimes you, you know, it, it just puts less stress on the fabric. I really do. I feel it does. So, you know, so true. Some have great machines and don't know what it does. Yep. Evelyn, it's, it is true because and that's and this is the other thing too. Sometimes people will that you have a machine, you don't understand it, you don't understand how it works, and right away you blame the machine. You're like, oh my god, it's broken. Oh my god, whatever. This 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 brand sucks. Meanwhile, sometimes it's really not. No, it's it's really a good machine. It's just that you you don't understand it yet. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. So you just have to really take the time. And that's why to me, when I when I take my machine in for servicing. I like to talk to the guy that's servicing my machine. And I like to ask him, oh, how are you cleaning the machine? How are you vacuuming out the lid? Or how are you adjusting my tension? You know, that's how I learned about the tension. You know, my the, the tension on my big machine was acting up. And I was like, oh, how do I fix this? And Justin was like, this is what you do. Take the bobbin case and just turn it a little bit. And I was like, oh, you do that? And, and that's how I learned. And when I learned how to adjust the tension on my big machine, then I went and I started playing around with the tension on my small machine. And then I went and I Googled. And, you know, E from the Baby Booty, she has a very good uh, video on the, the doing the tension. I think she did it on a 4 by 4 machine, if I remember correctly. And she's the one that gave me the idea about the letter I. It was it was Eve. Okay, she she did the letter I, and she she showed how the tension was supposed to look and stuff. And but she, I think if I remember correctly, she did not play with the bobbin tension. I believe she she just adjusted the tension on the top of the machine. And I forgot what brand of a machine she was using too and stuff. If she's still on. She may want to um uh put that on there and stuff but yeah you gotta get to learn your machine and stuff where can we download this guy oh okay um if you go to oh google it i um aqua bloom if you if you do google.com okay and then if you just type in type this in fabrics 101 stabilizer and design guide just type that in and it's going to show up you will see that link okay and if you don't reach out to me and i will i will get you the link if i remember correctly it's from an embroidery website and i think it's um embroiderylibrary.com i'm not sure but i know that if you type if you type this title in you'll be able to get this guide and this guide is really good. I'm telling you, I print it out. I got it stapled and it's right next to my machine. And that is my, my referral to also. Um, another sh issue that I'm just, okay, is deciding the brand thread. Can you go cheap on thread? Okay. Um, hey, Miss Sampson. Okay. As for the threads. Okay. Um, I, these are. I, when I first started, I bought a whole bunch of different sets, okay, because I wanted to see, you know, you, you hear it all the time, my machine likes this, my machine likes that, whatever. You just got to find what works for you. I usually have used Sim threads. I've used Padera threads. Um, I even use the, na the Nanny threads. I, I have a video where I bought uh, threads, and it was like a box of 240 threads. 
they I I have never run into an issue of a bad a bad type of threat. Okay, even the metallics and and when when I did the metallics video, I did it on three different brands. Okay, so my the way I see it with the threads, this is my advice. Whenever people are starting, what they they ask, what should I do? Pick a set. Pick a set to start with that. When you start to run out of the color of any of your set, okay, and you and you're gonna believe me, you're gonna grow your 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 threads. Your threads are gonna grow in time because think about it. When I first started, I started with a set of sixty three. Then I ended up buying the thread nanny set, and that was two hundred and forty. Okay. Now, one of the things that I say is start with a set, and then as you start embroidering, that's when you start um, <clears throat> using up your colors. One of the colors, you know, that I use up a lot, and those are the ones that you usually see right here with the big combs, is, you know, I start using a lot of blue, I start using a lot of yellow, a lot of red, a lot of green. When it came time to replacing those particular colors, I went for the big combs. Now, with the big combs, I always like to get Madeira, okay? I, will, I never had a problem with those. And those are pretty economical. Now, I do not get them from Amazon. I get them from allstitch.com. Because if you look at the thread on Amazon for a comb, they charge you $16. You go to allstitch and it's $8.95. Now, there is a catch, though, with allstitch, okay? With allstitch, you got to pay for the shipping unless you spent $150. So this is what I usually do. I I always do an inventory of all my threads and I look around and I get to see what threads I have that are running very low. When, and I always jot down the color that I need. Then what I do is when it's time to make my big comb embroidery thread purchase, that's when I have the $150 worth of thread. Now, if I see that I need to buy the threads, but I, have, I don't have $150 worth of threads, all stitch sells stabilizers, they sell bobbins, they sell needles. There goes your $150. And then next thing you know, you don't pay for your shipping and you only pay like, I think they charge $8.95 a thread, something like that for a big comb. And the big comb lasts a very long time. So um, Ms. Samson, that's how I do my, my threads. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, there you see a lot of different threads out there okay i have seen like um and there have been some that I, i've been wanting to try like thread art and all that kind of stuff they come in these can't fancy cases the only problem that i have though is those are very expensive threads and um to me i'm like mm, i don't know if i want to go that high on thread because think about it the more money you spend on threads the more money it's going to cost you to create your products if it costs you more more to create your products, that means you got to charge more to recoup that money. Something to think about, you know. I had someone try to hustle me. They wanted me to make several of my items and talk about paying me, but never came through. Glad I didn't start working on what they wanted. Always ask, Miss Simpson, always ask for the money up front. Up front. Yeah. No money, no work. That's what I say. Oh, no trabajo, no trabajo. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. Always ask for the money, for, especially personalized items. Because the thing is, you don't want your back on the wall. I'm telling you, people can be hustlers out there because what they'll do is they'll say, oh, I want this. Then you go ahead and you make all this stuff, right? And then they saw personalized and then they don't pay you or they want to pay you half or something like that. Mm, no. Money up front, this is what I do. That's one of the things that I like about my Etsy shop, okay? About having the Etsy shop. You tell me what you want, not a problem. I will create a custom list listing for you. I send them the list and I tell them up front. As soon as you got the list, as soon as you send the payment, then I start the work. And in the listing, it tells you the processing time. So it'll tell you when you're going to get your product. So that's how I always do it. That's what I like about the, the Etsy shop and stuff. And even I have QuickBooks, okay? If they if I'm not going to list it in QuickBooks, I will do the invoice in QuickBooks and then I send it to them. And in it in, in the invoice, in the in the payment instructions, it says work begins once payment is received. That's what I do all the time. All the time. 
People do not realize. Yep, people do not realize what um, go into in border. And you know, and the thing is, you have to be very clear. Also, that's the other thing too. When people don't know about embroidery and the work that it takes to get that, that's the time that you have to take to educate them. Okay, because a lot of times what they do is they think that you're just gonna put something in a machine, press a button, and walk away. No, it doesn't work that way. It talk. You're talking about threads. You're talking about a machine. You're talking about hooping. You're talking about stabilizing. You're talking. You're talking about aligning it correctly. And then when you're done embroidering and you take it out of the machine, you still have to do work on it. You got to put tender touch, the backing on the back of the embroidery. You know, there's work in that embroidery. Okay, and that's why embroidery is not cheap. It's not cheap. Okay, and sometimes you see a lot of people and they're selling it real cheap. But the way I see it is buy from them then buy from that. But I'm not going, I'm not going to cut myself short. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. If you want quality work, I'm your girl. I'm your girl. Okay. But you're going to pay. Okay. That's just me. That's just me. Maybe that's why I don't have any friends. I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm just too strict, I guess. I don't know. But Miss Samson, yes, don't, don't, no money. No money, no work. That's it. It's that simple. It is that simple. And stuff. So pay me first, then I embroider the item. Period. Yes, Carol. See, Carol got it. That's how you do it. And stuff. So you get the money first, and then you get your item. And stuff. So because if you think about it, that's how you would do it in Amazon. That's how you would do it if you purchased it from anyone else, right? When you go on Amazon, they don't just give you the item. You know, you pay first. And then the guy comes and delivers the item. No different. It shouldn't be any different. And stuff. Learn that the hard way. Hon, don't worry about it. We all learn the hard way sometimes. And those, those lessons that you learn the hard way are the ones you never forget. <laughs> Everyone is not your customer. Yes, everybody is not your customer. Sometimes, you know, you, you could have a bad customer. You know, don't be, don't be afraid of saying no. That's the other thing, too. Don't be afraid of saying no, because it's about your best interest. What's what what is in, you know, for what's best for you and your business? That's really, really what it is at the, at, at the end of the day. OK, yes, you want to make your sales. Yes, you want to have good customer service and stuff. But sometimes, you know, say no to something that doesn't feel right in your heart. Just just say no. It's OK to do that. You know, I mean, that's just me, you know. It's a, my mom told me how to rip fabric like that. Man, I, my mom didn't teach me. <laughs> she sure did. I never saw her do that. But she said she used to do that all the time in the factory and stuff. Um, John is cool. He is. I, Eve, I love watching his videos. And you can learn so much from him. So if you guys don't know, his, his name is John Deere, and I call him the king of embroidery, actually, <laughs> because it's like he knows everything. <laughs> his whole family is in nothing but embroidery, you know, and stuff. After the fabric is cut, you pull the thread and the fabric all the way across. It'll be straight. Girl, you know what? I'm going to do a video of me actually ripping it to see <laughs> but i know that i'm probably gonna have a heart attack in that video because i almost had a heart attack in that store when she ripped that i was like oh, oh i was like what did you do you just ruined my fabric i was like oh my god heart attack she looked at me like lady come down you know <laughs> it was it was like wow <laughs> I tried avoiding adjusting the bobbin case. Yeah, I, but you know, um, Eve, when I was talking to Justin, he's the one that recommended because what it is, is I, we were working on my multi needle and all of my top knobs were in the right place. So then he, then he said, adjust the bobbin. And then he talked me through adjusting the bobbin. And one of the things too that he had told me was, did you change brands of bobbins? And I was like, yeah, because I was using the all stitch. And then I started using the one with the little magnet inside. 
And he said, sometimes the type of bobbin, you know, because I changed the type of bobbin I was using, that's why I needed to adjust a little bit. I, I just adjusted it a little bit. I didn't have to adjust it that much. But by him showing me that, it was just something, me becoming more familiar with the machine and how things work. I had no idea that you could do that and stuff. Um, you can't be a push. No, you cannot be a pushover. Um, no, and, it, you know, and that's the other thing, too. Yeah, and, and you know, like I said, just you guys know what you're worth. Don't, don't let anybody tell you anything. Hey, Norma, how are you? Me and Norma were hanging out <laughs> in Miami. <laughs> Norma, I was telling everybody about um, going to uh, to New York, and we went to New York Fabrics, and the lady just ripped that, <laughs> ripped my fabric <laughs> and stuff. And I think that was like pretty cool. I really enjoyed uh, meeting you and stuff. And you know, I know uh, Maria reached out to me also while I was in Miami, and I wanted to to meet up with her also, but. Being with my family, I wasn't able to, um, hey, Miss Smiles, I wasn't able to, like, meet up with everybody. But, I, you know, when I was driving back, I was thinking to myself, I know some of you guys are in Miami. So I was thinking the next time that I go visit my mom, probably what I will do is I will put it on the Facebook page. Hey, everybody, let's meet at a certain location. And then we can all, like, go fabric shopping together or just, like, have lunch or something like that. Because... I think it would be like so cool if we could all like meet and stuff. And then I kind of figured if I go to another state, because I know we got some folks that are in um, Maryland, because I know Miss Brown is in, in Maryland and stuff. She's quite close to me and stuff. So I kind of figured if I travel a little bit and stuff, I'll probably like let you guys know like what kind of area that I'm in. And then maybe, you know, I get to meet some of you guys because I, I do like meeting people and stuff. Um, you know, I mean, I am a people person, so, you know, I just, you know, I just thought, you know, it would be really cool and stuff. So, even Smiles, um, got to tell them, we're not Nordstrom. Your customer service is a little bit different. Yeah, and and the policies, yes. Um, and, yeah, and when, if you have an Etsy shop and stuff like that, put your policies on there, too. You know, like, let them know your processing time and all that kind of stuff. But um, oh, Miss Simpson's in. Oh yes, definitely. Okay, definitely. Then we. I'm going to do that. I am going to do that because when I met Norma, that was like so cool, you know. Um, you know, and I would love to meet more people, you know, and stuff. I think that is like so cool. My only regret is I wish I had took me and Norma took a picture together, and and I I thought of it after we said goodbye, and I was like, ah, oh, because I would have loved to have put that on Facebook and stuff, but that's okay, Norma. I will go back to Miami to visit mommy and stuff and we will catch up again. I tr we truly will and stuff. So guys, it is past the hour. Oh my God, it's like 9.30 and stuff. And I didn't mean to keep jabbing and all that kind of stuff and everything. But I had to tell you guys about my uh, fabric rip experience. That was funny and stuff. <laughs> And guys, thank you so much for supporting me last week and joining the happy hour with me and my mom. Uh, my mom got such a kick out of it, um, you know, when we were doing the um, embroidery hour and when I showed her the laptop and she saw all you guys commenting. I don't know if you saw her face. It, it, it kind of like really brightened up and she was just like, oh, my God. And she was like, hey, <laughs> you know, and my aunt, too. So, um, you know, I kind of joked with them a bit and I was kind of like, you're famous now, you know? <laughs> so, you know, but she really, really enjoyed it. And I really liked making those memories. So I am looking forward to um, going back to Miami and making some more, um, you know, memorable moments with her and, you know, posting them on the channel too. Cause I thought that was like pretty cool, you know, and stuff. So, oh, I see Eartha. Hey, Eartha. Um, we tear sheer fabric worth like that at the work, make custom jigs. Oh my God. It's just, it, it, that was the first time that I saw that and it just, it, it freaked me out. <laughs> it really did. It really did. And so, so, hey, Suzette, how are you? Um, so guys, I am going to call it the night. It is the 4th of July weekend and stuff. 
please be safe out there enjoy and happy birthday america and uh you know as i you know if you're new to my channel please subscribe and please hit that like button and if you're not part of our facebook group please join it's called um embroidery happy hour adventures my my channel and the facebook group is all focused about helping people learn about embroidery sewing and other crafts and stuff um you know no question is a dumb question okay if you're starting no big deal I mean, you're gonna learn you're gonna make mistakes we're there to help you you know and just enjoy it and stuff i mean it's such a great craft because it's just so many things you can do with it and it's just so much fun so i hope you guys found the information that i shared with you guys tonight helpful and stuff as always feel free to reach out you know and um, i'm here to help sometimes i do facetime with some of the the folks and you know i do talk to some of you guys some some guys you know reach out and you know ask questions you know don't be shy you know i mean send me the messages and stuff like that you know because i know sometimes people might be a little shy and they just don't want to post their questions on facebook and that's okay okay so you know just enjoy it enjoy it you know um embroidering is a lot of fun it's something that's very you know unique and you can personalize so many things so just really have fun with it okay and so you guys have a great fourth of july so i'm gonna sign off now so that way you guys can get out there and just enjoy your weekend okay so i guys talk to you later be careful out there be safe and i will see you guys next week i'll talk to you later bye